Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. Today we finally have a chance to look at the Battle Damage Plesiosaurus from Mattel. This figure is easily one of the most elusive figures in the entire Jurassic World line from Mattel. This thing has just been the absolute biggest pain in the butt to get a hold of. I've been searching for months and it's shown up in a few places. I believe it briefly showed up in Canada. It then had also shown up in Australia and really, really briefly showed up on Walmart.com and then it actually sold out and then came back for just a matter of minutes a few weeks later and then it has disappeared and still has not come back since. So I really just got tired of playing the games when it came to trying to get a hold of this and I went ahead and just bought it on eBay. I ended up paying about 30 bucks for it which is a lot more than I would have liked to have paid. I really usually try to get my stuff for around the retail price but this one just seemed like it wasn't going to happen, so now with my luck, these will probably start showing up at Walmart and Target and everything, and it'll be everywhere, and I'll just be very angry that I spent the extra 20 bucks on it, but it is what it is. I'm at least happy now to have it. I've waited a few different times on other figures, and those same figures never ended up showing up in my area at all, so I figured it was better off just to take the chance and order it on eBay than possibly miss out on this very cool plesiosaur here from Mattel. So, as far as the packaging goes, you can see that it's the usual battle damage packaging. You've got the Rex there kind of giving us an awkward look, and then you've got an image of the plesiosaur here on the back, and then two images down here of other battle damage figures, which would happen to be the newer Pteranodon and the Stiggy Moloch. So let's go ahead, break this out of the package, and take a look at it. So here is our plesiosaur. And at first glance, it really, really looks quite cool. And I am actually quite shocked, to be honest, because this is another one of those figures where the coloration looks so different when I see images of it online and the promotional images and everything in comparison to when I actually get the figure in hand. Maybe it's just my lights, but I'm not really sure. It just kind of the area where I expected it to be just a pure white, which is like the lower half of the body is actually kind of like a light blue and that's really weird I mean it's actually really nice looking the coloration is really beautiful it's actually much nicer than the Savage Strike version but it's just it's kinda of caught me off guard because I thought that that was more of a whitish coloration and it does still have a very whitish appearance but at the same time a very slight bluish tone to it so it's a really beautiful color honestly I definitely quite like it a lot more actually than the whitish color that I initially thought it was but anyway, let's go ahead and get a closer look at this right now. So we don't really have to do too much as far as reviewing the sculpt because we recently reviewed the Savage Strike version and the sculpt of this is exactly the same as the sculpt of that one aside from of course the addition of the battle damage on this one. So we're really only going to look at any differences in this figure in comparison to the previous version, the Savage Strike version. So. If you want to see a more detailed review of the actual figure and the sculpt and everything, I will include a link in the description to the Savage Strike review. But for now, let's just take a look at the differences. So on the head, you can see that the head, like I said, is that very light bluish color. It's almost a white, but has a very nice, it's like a bluish green type of a tint almost to it. You can see the eyes are painted really nicely with a yellowish color. The pupil is nothing more than this dark blue coloration that you have up here on the top of the neck and head area and then you can see that this eye also looks really quite nice so it is really refreshing to see beautifully placed eyes on a Mattel figure since we do tend to get uh, a little bit of a bad paint job on the eyes from time to time the inside of the mouth is a very nice pinkish color you can see the tongue has a somewhat textured appearance to it it looks really really nice as far as that coloration goes beautifully glossed the inside of the mouth on the upper part of the jaw does not have paint on it which is a very slight downside but I don't think that's a very big deal as far as the teeth go you can see the teeth all look to be painted pretty nicely there's no real sloppiness or anything to them both the upper and lower jaw look pretty good as we start to move down the head you can see that there's like this dark blue that splotches down onto the face which I really do quite like this it's very similar to the Savage Strike version but just the colors are different on the Savage Strike version, you had a similar dark blue up here, but then the lower part of the body was more like a yellowish color, as opposed to this light blue that they have on this one. You can see the uh, joint where the neck articulates right here. Once you move it, that does tend to be a 
light blue color like the rest of the underside. Unfortunately, I think it would have been better had they just kept this area here like the same dark blue. I think the Savage Strike version had the same dark blue, so when you articulated the neck, you didn't really see that. But at the same time, you've got this spot here, and then you got this area, which you can just kind of chalk up to being another one of these spots. So it doesn't look that bad, actually. It's still pretty consistent with the rest of the paint job. As you move down the neck, it's just that same deal, the kind of blue splotchiness. And it's the same deal back here on the back. I really think they did a great job overall on the design of the coloration. I think that looks really, really nice. And both the light blue and dark blue play off of each other so well. It looks really, really nice in person. You can also see that there's that speckled type of an appearance that you get more often than not on Mattel figures. Really, really all over the body. This thing is just absolutely loaded with those speckles and spots. I really like that because it just gives a a little extra color variation when you wouldn't ordinarily have that so that's definitely a plus in my opinion but other than that the coloration is really all just that same there's nothing different aside from those two colors and then you've got the battle damage which is usually just press it and it opens up giving you that kind of gory type of an appearance to the insides of the plesiosaur it's got a nice gloss in there as well so it looks fairly realistic really nice usage of the battle damage and it's cool to have a battle damage version of the plesiosaur and if you want the jurassic facts app code there it is right there so you can add this to your collection but yeah really really nice looking plesiosaur definitely worth the hunt so as far as articulation on this plesiosaur i believe it's the same articulation that we had on the last one as well so you've got the jaw that articulates really nicely you've got articulation in the neck right there up here in the upper part of the neck you've also got articulation at the joint of the neck and then all of the flippers as well the flippers are much nicer on this one as far as the articulation goes because you can actually put them into the positions that you want them to stay in whereas with the savage strike version the actual Savage Strike was the flippers, so you didn't really have as much as far as mobility and articulation that you could pose it into, like you couldn't do this pose with the Savage Strike version. And to prove that point, here is the Savage Strike version. So here are both versions together. Like I said, this one, you have to press the button and it articulates the flippers for you. You can't position it like the Battle Damage version where you can stand it up. But they do still look really, really cool next to each other, and you can definitely get an idea of the color differences between the two. Here with them next to each other, you can definitely see that they are significantly different as far as the color. Even the actual splotchiness to the back, I actually thought that this was similar to the Savage Strike version, but the Savage Strike version is actually quite different. Definitely a very different splotchiness design to it. And if I had to pick one or the other, I would easily say that the Battle Damage version is the superior looking version in my opinion. It's really, really nice as far as the paint abs go. But the Savage Strike one is really cool too. I actually like both quite a bit, but I am a bigger fan of this Battle Damage one. As far as the size goes, from the tail to the head, you're looking at about 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. And for a height, if we actually keep him up like this, you'll see it at about just under 4 inches or about 9.5, almost 10 centimeters. But if we lay it down with its flippers actually out like this, then it's going to be a totally different story as far as a height goes. Now you'll see it at about just under three inches or around seven centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex and he is definitely giving you the idea that this is a smaller figure as far as a plesiosaur goes. It's in the battle damage size range with all of the other battle damage figures aside from maybe like the Albertosaurus and the Spinosaurus, but they are all mostly the same size range all around the attack pack size and you can definitely see that next to the Papo T-Rex. However, the Papo Rex is a pretty good sized figure, so it's showing also that this isn't really, really small, but I mean, as far as a Jurassic World toy goes, it's definitely on the smaller side. So this Mattel Jurassic World Plesiosaur is absolutely fantastic, to be honest. I think the sculpt of this is really, really beautifully done. I mentioned a lot more about the sculpt in the Savage Strike review, but just gonna talk about it here for a minute it is really wonderfully sculpted I think all the detailing and all the very minute details that you could possibly include on something like this that would otherwise have a much smoother 
feel to it when it comes to the skin texture and everything and a much smoother appearance I think they nailed the sculpt of this there is actually so much detail included in the sculpt of this plesiosaur it's really quite staggering to be honest Mattel always just blows me away with the sheer amount of detail and sculpt that they include in their figures it almost feels like they take some of the absolute best paleo artists in the world to work on them yet I have no idea who sculpts these figures so whoever it is really does a great job they definitely do their homework as far as how the animals would look as far as detailing of the skin texture and everything and it is definitely an absolutely beautiful looking plesiosaur as usual we don't have to take scientific accuracy into play because anything from Jurassic World isn't a full-blown dinosaur as it is mixed with parts of other modern day animals so we're not going to comment as far as scientific accuracy on any Jurassic World figure ever but as far as looking at this from the standpoint of how well it's sculpted it is fantastic I am a huge fan of this paint scheme on this as well this paint scheme is so much better in person than I ever thought it would be and it's easily one of my favorites as far as the Mattel line when it comes to the paint application because it just has a really beautiful appearance to it the tones and everything that they've used on this are perfect and the usage of all of those little speckles all over that they tend to include on most figures just for some reason looks so much better on this one specifically so if you do have a chance to hunt this one down I highly recommend anybody do just that because it is an absolutely beautiful looking plesiosaur in person I will actually link you guys to where I purchased it on eBay if there are any left still they were actually kind of selling like hotcakes because at this point $30 is kind of a cheaper price for this with how ridiculously hard to find it's been but I will link you guys on eBay to where I picked this one up if there are any left you should definitely go ahead and jump on grabbing one if you are interested in case they don't show up in the United States or wherever you do in fact live so hopefully you guys can acquire one of these very beautiful battle damage plesiosaurus figures but before you go hunting for one make sure you like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next review thanks for watching